What's up, all? All right, let's take a look at um, getting PlayStation 1 working on Emulation Station. I'm going to make a few videos here on exactly how to do uh, standalone emulators. Not going to set them up all at the same time. If you want to know how PS1 works, let's do PS1 together. You want to know how Dolphin works, we'll do Dolphin together. Uh, so forth and so on. I'm going to break them up into individual videos. And as you can tell, this is probably the first one. So we're going to take a look at PlayStation 1. Uh, why? Because people like playing PlayStation 1. And so we're going to put it all together. Um, right now, we're going to assume we already have Emulation Station up and running. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I put a basic guide, uh, basic setup guide, you know, on how to do that uh, in a previous video. I'll link to it here somewhere. And um, you can go back and kind of follow that. So this is going to be specifically for PlayStation 1. Um, you're going to need... A couple of different things. First, emulation station set up and running. Uh, second, what you're going to need, and you'll see on my desktop here, uh, is we are going to run uh, PSX. Uh, it doesn't matter specifically what version, I don't think, but there's a very specific reason why uh, we are picking this one. Um, I tried a couple of other different emulators, and they're really difficult to get running. Um, through emulation station they need extra parameters in order to be able to run the rom directly through the emulator uh you, they all call for you to open the emulator on their own and then select the game and then start running which that doesn't really work very well with the emulation station because it needs to be seamless and flawless well psx uh playstation one emulator works great doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles unfortunately but it's a good you know, get it up and running type of thing. Um, second is going to be our BIOS. This is always going to be separate from the emulator because of copyright laws or whatever the, you know, stuff is. Um, go on and download this one here. Uh, scph-1000.bin. Uh, that should be it. You'll need that one. And of course, your game of choice or games of choice if you need multiple ones. Uh, my favorite game of all time is Marvel vs. Capcom. So we'll be doing that one. Uh, so first things first, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up our uh, emulation station folder. So uh, as long as you've done this before, you should be fairly familiar with it. We'll drill down in here. And um, I've kind of done this ahead of time and setting up some of it just so that way I was very um, aware of exactly each step to tell you guys so that way there's not me tripping over myself, stopping for a minute and going, wait a minute, I forgot, you know. So uh, a couple of the steps I might kind of already have done, but I'll kind of let you know ahead of time. And then other ones we'll do together so that way uh, you'll know what to do. And I try to like make, make my videos kind of quick. Uh, so if you're going to follow along, pause button is your friend, you know, just pause it, keep going, rewind, stuff like that. That way, if someone just wants to know what the, the scheme of how to do this without actually doing it, doesn't have to suffer through like a 30 minute video of me waiting and showing you loading pages and stuff. So um, the very first thing that we're going to want to do is put our uh, emulator, emulator in our folder. So we'll open our systems folder and we're going to make a brand new folder called PSX. If you don't know, PlayStation 1 PSX is the acronym for that. PS2 is PS2, you know, so PS3. But X is always the original one, just in case for some reason you never figured that out. And if I'm wrong, eh, sue me. Um, I love using 7-Zip. It's really great. So we have gone to the site and we have downloaded already for the video. However, the link in the description is below off of the site that I got this off of. It's directly there. Um, so yeah, and what we're going to do is we're going to have our folder open, have our the zip file open, and just drag and drop. Beautiful. Awesome. That's step one. <laughs> Very easy. Uh, so we have this in here. We're good to go. And then we're going to drop, we're going to copy it. I suggest copying just in case you don't want to lose your BIOS folder or file for whatever reason. And you're going to want to drop it in the BIOS folder. Boom, done. And then you can delete the other one that says, you know, the placeholder there for theirs. So it should look relatively similar. Um, 
One thing I recommend doing, and this happens with PS1 and PS2 and many other emulators, is you'll need to start them ahead of time. You don't want to try to start them for the first time through Emulation Station. They need help. You know, they need a, a little bit of uh, configuration and all that. So we're going to start it up, and we're going to say, yes, we speak English. And it's going to complain and say, I don't know where the BIOS is, even though it opens the folder in which it already exists because we put it there. So we're going to say open. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to shut it down because it's probably going to get a little loud there. Um, for some reason, <laughs> they always are super loud. So good. Got that done. We're configured. We're ready to go with that. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to drop our game in our ROMs folder. And so we're going to do that. We're going to do a new folder called PSX. Oh, no Z. Unless you want to Z. Open that up. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm not even going to do the folder of World vs. Capcom. I'm just going to drop the games in there. Um, you should usually have two game files. One is like the actual game. You can tell by the size of the file. And the second one is like kind of like a call to it. Um, when you're using PlayStation 1 games, for what I understand, you use like the call to there or whatever. Or sometimes the actual game, actually. Now that I think about it, it's random. So, I don't know. Ask guys at PlayStation, whoever made the emulators. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, uh, after that's done, um, we need to check. And you're probably saying this if you know ahead of time, our systems folder. And this is like, of course, remember, the bread and butter of how these things go together. So I've gone through and I've already configured it. I'm leaving it up here. Pause the video. Copy exact down just how I have it, you know. But with whatever paths that you've made, you know. For us, though, we should have created a ROMs folder, which should uh, match with it. So PSX, emulation station ROMs slash PSX, ROMs PSX, good. Uh, systems is going to be the same thing, just same naming convention to see, keep it as uh, easy as possible. And then psxfin.exe. And if we drill down, that is the executable, psxfin.exe. So once again, um, I try to drill this as hard as possible into everybody's minds that <laughs> watches these, you know, is this is the most confusing part for a lot of people is how to get it running. And so we want to make sure that we use the right naming conventions, all the right capitalizations and syntax and all that uh, for, and to make it as simple as possible, it's just a simple X exe. It's nothing after it. You don't need any special stuff. So for the name, it's PSX, lowercase, full name, PlayStation. The path should be whatever yours is, but hopefully you've kept it simple. And it's here with the ROMs and that, and that's where we put it. Extensions is going to be the Q and the zip. And then um, our path here, of course, with the ROM raw and platform PSX and theme PSX and save. Right, ah. and we should be ready to go. So we're going to turn on our controller ahead of time because we know to do that. We are going to minimize our folder here just to make it look pretty, and we're going to start emulation station. Okay, so uh, when I started up there, you saw that it didn't recognize it correctly. And um, I went back real quick to see why. And um, this is a good learning experience. Usually I just cut this out and make it look like I didn't make any mistakes, but I wanna make sure that everybody kind of learns along with me. So uh, we're gonna open our folder again. We are going to go to C drive, users, droid, relation station. All right, and our systems and I want to point something out here, and it's something I was looking at earlier, and the game variations are different, and there are naming conventions. So if you look in ROMs, we'll see that we have a bin and an SRM. To be honest, I really don't know what those stand for, but I know one calls to the other and stuff like that. They work in tandem. Um, if you noticed before, I only had Q, Q, and Zip. However, none of those are in here. You know, there's a bin and an SRM. So what I did was, is I added bin in. 
and it's going to now find this one here, this big file. So um, based on how the the you know games are ripped and stuff like that, they probably use different uh, things. Um, so just as we learn and as we go along, if it gives you that error, it's because it didn't see anything, and it needs to see at least one thing to populate in order to get the games in there. So we're going to minimize these, and we're going to try it again now. And our controller is on, and boom. Now we have PlayStation, and there's our Marvel vs. Capcom. Just to keep this as short as possible and to be as simple as possible, we're not going to scrape the title or anything like that. Um, there's another video on how to do that, you know, and you guys can figure it out. Uh, and we're going to hit A. And it says this. This happened to me earlier, and I had to kind of tell it twice. The first time during the setup, and then once again. So... Now you'll see it starts up here. So we're actually going to close all this down and just click it one more time. And now it starts up as it should. Once again, I'm not going to run it all the way through. In fact, I will run it all the way through. Just so you guys know that the game actually works. Because this is just the BIOS loading. I apologize that this is way too loud. And there you go. And that's it. Now we have it running. We're good to go. Um, from there, you can open the emulator back up. You can do configuration changes like full screen and stuff like that. Get your Xbox, PS, controller, Mad Cats, whatever you have going. And you're good to go. And you're running it. All right. Hey, guys. If you have any questions or need any help or just uh, want to give your input on stuff, Give it in the comments, like it below. Great. Have you emulating.